I would like to apologise for not releasing a recipe over the last few weeks. Things have been a little bit up and down with the current climate. I've not been enjoying shopping and getting ingredients. So I've been trying to live to my means and live off what I've got in my cupboard. Um, but today's recipe it is a really nice simple recipe. There's hardly any ingredients in there and the whole family will enjoy them. It's really nice treats. As well as that I have some good news. So Really Simple Recipes has been going now for a year, so I started on the 30th of May. Please do give me a like on that one, smash that like button please. Um, to celebrate that I will be running a competition on Instagram, um, so please follow me, link in the description below and keep an eye out for that, there will be lots of goodies and snacks in there for you. Uh, as well as that, ensure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, I've got lots more recipes, lots more ideas. Uh, that are going to come your way so hopefully I can get back to some normality. Let's get started. Hi I'm Emma with Really Some Recipes and today I'm going to show you how to make cheese and onion pasty. For these pasties the ingredients that I'm going to be using is some nutritional yeast, one medium onion, a medium potato, plain flour, flour or buttery, some unsweetened soya, a few seasoning, a few salt and pepper, and we've also got some of your puff pastry. So this one is your frozen block, so I have had it in the freezer overnight to thaw it out. Uh, always get it out of the fridge about 30 minutes before you're ready to use, just to make sure you can roll it out. I will say, if you can get the sheets, it is a lot easier, but in this current climate where we're at, at the moment, things are hard to come by, so choose what you can. As you can see, I'm trying to make things last as long as possible. Um, hopefully I can get a couple out of that, which I think I will. First we'll start by preheating our oven. So I'm going to pop my oven onto a gas mark 6, make sure it's nice and warm. So we're going to start with our potato and onion first of all. So that's my potato and onion all done and ready to go. So I'm going to pop my potato into the pan. And I'm going to stick this on the hob behind me, bring it to boiling point, and then I'm going to drop it down to a simmer. So it's going to take 10 minutes to do. We don't want to overdo it because we'll end up with the really slushy potatoes. You know how they go when they go, all the starch comes out of them. Um, so I'm going to stick that behind me and get that on. And what I'm going to do with that onion, once my potatoes have reached boiling point and I've got about eight minutes left to cook the potatoes, I'm going to pop the onion in as well just to soften that off. That way I'm not using any oil by frying them, making sure it's nice and soft ready to go into these pasties. So we'll make a start on the cheese a bit of our pasty. So I'm going to start by melting our butter first. Let's pop that into the pan. Make sure we get that all out. Okay, and nicely melted down. For this, as I say, I like to use flora buttery. Um, just because it's the nicest plant-based butter and it's really, as a word, say buttery. So that's what I like on this one. And what we're going to do now Pop it in our flour. So we're going to make this into like paste. Give it a good stirring. Make sure you don't burn that butter either. You can see it's starting to thicken up. This is what we want. Brilliant. Just pick up a bit more. And what we're going to do with your nutritional yeast and your soya milk, we're going to add in three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Like so. And what we're going to do now is we're going to swap over to a whisk. And we're going to slowly whisk in this milk and nutritional yeast. See, it's starting to thicken up now. Make sure you keep it stirring because we don't want it to, to not mix in, we don't want it to burn either. It's lovely and thick now. This is 
totally preference with regards to your seasoning. I just think it's nice to put some salt and pepper in there because it's got a good seasoning. You don't have to put salt and pepper in if you don't want to. I just feel it just needs that little bit of extra kick. I'll put that in there as well. So let's give that another stir in. And you can see there how it's starting to thicken up. And it's going to thicken up even more once you've added that potato and that onion. What I'm going to do now, because my potatoes have reached boiling point, and there's about eight minutes left on there, I'm just going to pop my onion in with the potato to soften them off. My potatoes and onion are now ready. So they've been on the hob for 10 minutes in total. So 10 minutes for the potatoes, boil or then simmer. And then your onion, they've been in there for about eight minutes as well. And all I've done is popped them into a colander to just make sure we get all that excess water off there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pop them into a bowl so that we can mash them. Make sure that you get all that onion out of there because you don't want to waste any of that lovely onion. Okay. Now when I say mashing, I'm not going to be mashing with a mash, I'm going to mash with a fork. For this, it does not matter if it is lumpy, your potato, that's absolutely fine. We aren't asking for a perfect mashed potato. Just give that a mash up with a fork. Give it a good mix, it's looking good. That should be fine. Because when you put it into your pastry, the rest of your potato will soften up anyway so it's it's not a problem if you've got lumps in there you don't really big lumps of course little lumps is absolutely fine so what we're going to do now is add in our cheese sauce mixture so you can see there how much it is thickened up already um, as it's been sitting so i'm just going to add that in there as well make sure we get it all out okay and just give that a big mix round so make it nice and thick and creamy, which is what we want with our cheese and onion pasties. Good mix. Just because I've got some of this in, I'm gonna add some of Tesco's Mature Cheddar, so it's your free from section. This is one of the nicer ones, I really like this one. Um, unfortunately, it contains coconut oil, which I'm not a massive fan of, try to avoid as much as I can. But just because I've got it in today, I'm just gonna add it into these pasties. If it is that you want to go without the cheese, you can. You've got that nutritional yeast in there. That'll give you that lovely cheesy flavour that you're after. And if you want, you can always add more nutritional yeast. The good thing about this recipe, you can make it to your taste, your adaption. Um, add more salt, add more pepper, add no salt and pepper. You know, go with it, give different things a try and see what you like. And I'm not going to add a lot of this because, as I say, I'm not a fan of coconut oil. I'm not somebody that likes to eat coconut oil. It's not a healthy fat. Um, so I'm just going to just grate a little bit of this in. So we pop this into here. But as I say, if I didn't have it in the fridge, I would very happily make these pastas without any plant-based cheese. Let's pop that in. The good thing about this one from Tesco as well, um, this is an indoor by Tesco by the way, is it melts really, really nicely. It's a really nice cheese, really get a good melt on it. The reason I have it, I know coconut oil, I keep saying I don't like it, is I like a cheese toasty every now and again. Um, so this one works really, really well for cheese toasties. Looking really nice. Now we're going to let that cool down and we're going to move on to our pastry, the final part before we pack them into the oven. Okay, so we're going to roll out our pastry now. I am not a fan of rolling out soft pastry, mainly because you can sometimes roll it out too far or not roll it out enough and then you end up with a weird kind of like staggered effect on your pastry. Um, so hopefully it will do this one right. We'll see how it goes. So I've got some flour. So you're probably thinking, my flour's a little bit weird. So this is Polish flour. 
So my neighbour very kindly went out of her way and got me a load of flour from a Polish shop um, because this is the kind of times we're in at the moment. Flour is difficult to come by, as we all know. Um, so I'm just going to dust my surface with a bit of flour. I'm just rub it out. I'm just going to dust my pin as well. So this is where I'm probably going to pin it out too far. But hey ho, we are where we are, it's not a problem. Let's give that a pin out. As I say, if you can get the sheets, it is so much easier. All you need to do is cut your squares to the relevant shape. Cut your pastry to the relevant shape, should I say. Um, but unfortunately, as times are as they are, it's not something I have access to. I've not seen it anyway. My pasty is nice and big. You know, a pasty, you've got to do it right, haven't you? Okay, so one side's really square and one side isn't. <laughs> okay, that'll do. It'll be fine, we'll work up with that. So, I need to cut this in half now. So, let's get a knife and just cut it down the middle. I am going to try and work this here and transfer it over. Mainly because it's easier to crimp it, it's easier to get that good seal on there. So what we're going to do, put some of your filling into your pastry mix. Oh look at that colour, that lovely yellow colour that you get with your pasties. It smells so nice sisters. Okay, should be enough because you've got to be wary that you don't want it to spill out. Nine times out of ten it will. <laughs> But we aren't fussed about that. And what I'm going to use to seal this with, you might have seen me use this before on my Wellington recipe. I'm just using a bit of my faux egg glaze. So this is maple syrup mixed with soya milk. So it's two part milk, one part maple. To use that, and this gives it that real nice glow as well. Okay, there we go. And just give all that a good squeeze around with your fingers first, just to make sure you get a nice seal. This bit where you hope you put enough filling in. <laughs> okay, and then what we're gonna do, make sure it's nice and done. I'm just gonna get a fork, I'm just gonna double seal it, like so. Get no awards for presentation. Probably try, don't we? Presentation doesn't matter when you've got it's going to go one place and one place only, which is in your belly. Okay, so making sure it's really crimped down. There we go. You can just tuck the edges up a bit. I do like to just smooth them over so we've got that nice seal. And what I'm going to do with the spatula, lift it on to my grease proof tray. Why do I cry? <laughs> I don't know. And then what we're going to do with that, make sure it's as nice as possible, is we're just going to do one, two, three, four, just a couple of holes in it, make it look pretty. Oh. And then we're just going to glaze it, luckily uh, I spilt some on that, so spread it out and give it a glaze, give it that nice golden colour that you get with egg. This just goes to show you don't need egg in your life to make things. There we go. And we're just going to do the second one. That is your pasties done and ready to go in the oven. So these will take about 20 to 30 minutes. It's as simple as that. Cheese and onion pasty. If you really enjoyed this one today, do give me a like. It is a good one. Are there any ingredients? Really simple. As we say, really simple recipes. If you want to see even more really simple recipes, do subscribe to my channel. And if it is, you've got any questions, comments, feedback, anything at all, please pop that below. Thank you for watching.